A while back, we got a super rare look into how Apple made their most recent keynote, which they revealed to us was shot entirely on an iPhone. Well, kinda. See, that video got inundated with comments talking about how it's not really the iPhone doing it. They needed hundreds of thousands of dollars of different type of equipment to give it that look. So in this video, I wanna prove to you why if you agree with that statement, you're wrong. So yesterday, Apple released a 15 minute short film called Little Garlic. It's a cute short film about this girl who shapeshifts and is kind of discovering who she is. You should go check it out. All this stuff will be linked in the description. This is a short film that could be easily replicated at home by you. For example, take a look at how beautiful this shot is. And if you want to replicate this with your own iPhone, I actually did a 30 minute deep dive into all the techniques of how to recreate this shot exactly and many others from this film. So if you're interested in learning more, check out the link in the description below. And alongside the final film, they released a three and a half minute behind the scenes, which gives us some really cool inside look as to how they created the film. Because when we look at the behind the scenes of the Apple keynote ad, all we can see are techno cranes, lights that cost $30,000 a panel. While in the behind the scenes of this video, we see a lot of people just holding the iPhone by itself. We see it on very consumer friendly gimbals, like what looks like a RS3 or RS3 Pro. There's definitely a couple moments of definitely more high-end gear that we see, but from what I can tell, 99% of these shots can be fully done with very basic consumer-friendly equipment. I think we need to clear up what actually happened in that Apple Kino and why it's so incredible and what I think a lot of people missed and kind of went over their heads when they saw all that extra gear. It's not that the iPhone requires all of that gear to give a good image. It was that Apple usually uses all of that gear in their productions and how incredible is it that they were able to replace the Airy or whatever high-end cinema cameras they're used to using with an iPhone and use their workflows like normal, still have a video village to where they could monitor things, still use the crazy techno crane, all the extra lights, and still get the image that they're pretty much used to getting. Imagine if you had a $50,000 budget and you could either shoot it on an iPhone, but then essentially have $49,000 to rent out, set design, hire professional actors, and do everything that you're supposed to do to get a proper production together, versus if you spend that 50,000 on an Aerie Alexa Mini, but now you have to throw on a cheap lens and ask your friends to act in their apartment for free. Which video do you think is going to turn out better? The iPhone production would win simply because you were able to put more money, time, and resources into the things that truly matter, which is set design, wardrobe, acting, and all of the things that actually happen within the frame rather than the thing capturing the frame. But if we jump into the behind the scenes of the Little Garlic uh, short film here, we can see again, these setups are very, very basic. But the part that I was actually really intrigued and kind of happy to see beyond just the physical gear that they're using is they're actually using a variety of different camera modes. We talk a lot about the issue with uh, medium type shots or like two ups where you have like multiple characters and you're trying to add depth or focus pulls between those. And Apple ProRes Log is incredible. And if you have a, a subject very close to the camera, then you can get some nice uh, fall off with the focus in the background, get some good depth going. But if you're, you know, six or eight feet away from the camera, you got a wall just a couple of feet behind that, the image can start to look pretty flat. So you have stuff like cinematic mode, but I've never really experimented with mixing the more professional Apple Log ProRes footage with cinematic mode H.265 footage. But here, when you put the footage in the hands of, you know, I'm sure professional editors, professional colorists, those shots are actually matching quite well. And for the shots that really require that depth, where you wouldn't necessarily get it because of the phone's tiny sensor, they're able to use the mode of cinematic mode to pick where their focus is, uh, change focus between the characters, either in post or on set. And really the main other gear we see are some basic consumer grade gimbals. And a lot of times the phone is plugged into is a USB-C splitter of some sort. 
I was trying to look for exactly which one they used, but I couldn't really tell. This is just a USB-C 3.0 splitter. In this way, you can keep your phone charged. You can have filming straight to a solid state drive. And it looks like they're going to some version of a HDMI output so that they can have a, a video village. And a lot of times it looks hard lined in. So they're just plugging straight into a external monitor with a really long cable. The other absolute strength to filming with an iPhone is the amount of creative shots that they were able to get. And they were usually for quick cuts because that's where these kind of creative outlier shots work best. Normally to get shots at these angles, you'd have to spend a lot of time rigging, coming up with really specialty lenses. But here, nope, they just duct tape a iPhone to a basketball. They just slide the iPhone into a, what looks like a planter or something hanging uh, so they can get a little more of a top down shot. You just honestly are limited by your own imagination for rigging this camera in different places. And they really showcase that in this short film. I think really the only other gear they uh, really use is it looks like the small rig universal cage in the beginning. I could be wrong about that. They use very general phone clamps. Like I said, uh, looks like the DJI RS3. There's definitely a few shots like this one right here where they're using a pretty crazy dolly setup because I believe for the final image they needed, yeah, she's transitioning from actors. So they needed that shot to be very lined up and repeatable so they could do it over again. But again, if you're on a no budget list, simply just get a cheap dolly track or just do the best you can with a gimbal to get a similar tracked shot. Here we can see they're using the Blackmagic camera app. Here they're trying to do seamless zoom in and out while they're recording. So they're using the stock camera app. They, they actually filmed in some pretty intense scenarios like this club scene here, like the colors hold up pretty strong like it's not bad at all yes of course something like an airy is gonna be able to capture and reproduce the colors so much better but that's not bad again this film is not technically perfect there's still moments where i think i saw some dynamic tone mapping issues or the exposure was a little weird or the colors look slightly off you still have issues with cinematic modes you know not so perfect edge lines in every shot with like hair and stuff. So we certainly have not reached the finish line of filming with an iPhone. So next time you see a video that is shot on iPhone and you see the behind the scenes footage where it shows expensive equipment, know that that equipment serves more of a purpose than to just support the phone because it needs it. Because when you take professionals doing their thing, being creative, and giving them the freedom of filming with a camera that can be placed pretty much anywhere, you are still fully capable of making an incredible project. And this is a film that anyone can do if they actually focus on the important parts of filmmaking. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Again, if you wanna learn anything more about filming with an iPhone or any other type of phone, you can check out my iPhone filmmaking guide in the description. And if you wanna see where I talk about how Apple created the keynote with their shot on iPhone campaign, check out this video right here.